Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. The Wasteless World Talks are here again shortly before, before the Eastern. And today we have a special Easter egg for you. Little earlier, but still. We will speak about the term enough. And I can grant you that it will be very interesting discussion. And Bill, I will start with you. So if you close your eyes and you hear the term enough, what came to your mind first? Uh, that's a good way to ask the question, what came to your mind, because in, for me, it is a state of mind. It is a condition of the mind, and it is a totally different condition of the mind than what I have lived for the last many decades. As a, as a salesman, as a businessman, everything was more we want more sales we want more profits we want more we want bigger bigger more 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 and what came to mind was that's wrong <laughs> at some point i just realized that that's wrong <clears throat> because i have been fortunate enough to been given enough of everything I have enough food, I have enough house, I have enough car, I have enough to be happy. And so now I'm a preacher, and I am preaching this word, enough. And that's what came to mind. Thank you for the answer. What about you, Kevin? The same question. First thing that came to my mind was this quote, and I don't know where it comes from, but enough is never enough and it sounds like a, a quote from the 80s I could be wrong but um, <clears throat> yeah I think that enough is never enough tells us everything about what is wrong with modern society it's quite interesting in the noon discussion having the same topic the answer the first answer from Pet from Australia was very interesting for me because she said the first what I think about, it's I am enough. And generally, I was never uh, expecting this answer in connection to a person because we don't use it in Czech language. So it was quite strange. But she explained it's generally related to her childhood and that for her mother, she never delivered enough results. So <laughs> for a long time, it was somehow projected in her life. And and today she feels to, to are the same like you, Bill, that it's enough. It's we do not need to hunt for more, but enough is important. And I think somehow the term almost disappeared from the language because it was subs there was the substitute of more. And I finished yesterday or day before yesterday one of the Czech blogs and I came to a very interesting a connection, you know. I found out that in the school, every yes is rewarded, but every no is punished. And it was so interesting for me that I have to write an article about it, but generally, uh, and there was never enough, you know. I try to remember when somebody told me last time, Michael, it's enough. I do not remember. Simple do not remember. I think enough is has been in, in my life almost a, a, a bad word, a swear word, like if I cussed. Um, so, so how do you have enough? You know, it's a bad word, and it was, it was, it, it was discouraged that you use that word. I like your quote, Kevin. Enough is never enough. I like that. I, I, yeah, I'd love to know where it comes from. It's, um, it's one of these things that we can use enough in two ways. You know, that's not enough, or that's more than enough. It, it's quite interesting. It's like a, a pivot enough. Is that enough? Have you had enough? 
that's more than enough. It's quite um, it's an interesting word, but it's 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 not the same as sufficient. Is that sufficient? It's yes or no? Is that enough? It's quite a stretchable value. Yes, yes. I will say, for me, there will be never enough of wasteless war talks. There will be never enough of articles written because I need them for my life. But I never thought the term in a connection to money. I do not remember. I just live according to the situation. So I, yes, Bill? Well, the, uh, I was thinking to what, uh, what you said, Pet from, from Australia uh, had said about it. Um, uh, I, I am enough. We, for some reason, I don't know if you do it in, in other countries, but we rank ourselves. Uh, I'm always, you know, who is first in the class? Who is the fastest kid? Who is, you know, and we, so we rank ourselves with the assumption that everybody would like to be number one in whatever we're ranking ourselves in. I'd like to be the fastest, the richest, the smartest, the whatever. And so to say enough, I am enough, I'm, I'm here and that's enough. Sounds like we're giving up on being better. But better according to whose criteria? That's the right point. Just yesterday, Elon Musk mentioned that artificial intelligence is right now or will be soon 1,000 times smarter than a human brain. How do you calculate that? I don't know. But I know that, uh, you know, the people who gave up on their own brain, they will probably have never enough because they will need data. They will need money yes. to buy data. They will need a uh, connection. They will need all what is needed by the giants that the society needs. And Pet was very, uh, let's say upset because uh, just yesterday or day before yesterday, the Australian government approved the digital act in fact, so everything should be digitalized in Australia. And we know, all of us, we know how dangerous this situation is when someone has the, and it will not be even the government will not have the hand on the plug. No, it will be all the time someone different. So I think it's really time for enough. But it's interesting. You, If you look at nature, nature, of course, doesn't like waste so nature is uh, finely tuned to make sure that everything works on the amount of enough <clears throat> i think that if nature really insisted that we'd have more intelligence we would have more intelligence we don't need machines to give us that intelligence if nature realizes that we have enough then <laughs> That's it. There is no point in having more intelligence because it's not going to fit in with the rest of the planet, with the rest of nature. It's going to be out of sync with the environment it's in. We simply don't need artificial intelligence when we don't use the intelligence we already have. Uh, you know, yesterday I published in, uh, in the English blog, I published the article called Brainless Intelligence. And what is interesting, I compare nature is brainless. It does not have a one brain. It's generally in some way it's brainless, but the same is artificial intelligence. It does not have a brain. And still many people try to sell it as a, as, as human-like feature having a brain, but it has nothing to do with a brain. So intelligence in this way, it's generally brainless. So, uh, and we have... When I was a kid and someone was due, due for, or not so intelligent, we call him brainless. And generally, it was a shame. Today, we celebrate brainless, uh, in, uh, brainless technology, 
and we celebrate it, you know, not you, not me, but many celebrate it. That's a sad That is true. I remember this, I don't know where it comes from, but um, there was this quote from the 70s and 80s, I think, therefore I am. Yeah. Whereas today, you can have that quote, I don't think, therefore I use AI. <laughs> <laughs> that was Descartes in the 1800s, I think, or 1700s. I think, therefore, I am. So if I don't think, if I let AI and computers do my thinking, I do not think, therefore, I don't exist. Yeah, yeah, I am not. Yeah, uh, I am not. In uh, 218, uh, few minutes before our talk, there was a published an article by Indian Forbes, Forbes, and there is an article about a stu stu uh, Indian student on MIT, Massachusetts MIT, where he developed a technology in 2018, which speaks for you. You do not have to open your mouth, you do not have to speak, it transfers those thoughts into the language. I can send it. It's really fresh. I just get it. I didn't read it. But I remember that I read it before already. And I even wrote about it that I will advise this technology to, to apply, you know, to apply it to politicians, to apply it <laughs> to many world leaders and decision makers, you know. It will speak what they will think. It will be very interesting. Of course, uh, the original intention was to help people who cannot speak anymore or has some brain injury or something like that. And I'm confused that it's six years and it show up today again, which I don't know why, but I have the ability that I can show in my diary and I will find it there generally what is quite interesting. So I think that nature keeps our thoughts hidden for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting world. So I think that many, I think that currently many even companies and businesses and even the governments have to think enough, have to really implement it in the in the strategy. It's like the degrowth, you know, degrowth is generally started with enough. And thanks to Swain, I know that uh, a few days ago the government of Norway applied generally the first industry 5.0 principles in some, in some, uh, they do not call it so, but uh, we see that they follow what, what we have, uh, what we have set and align and so on and give them, of course, we say, we share everything. So it's quite interesting that already the first company start to speak about enough. I am looking forward, there will be in one month, there will be a conference, logistic conference, here in my country where I am speaking, and there will be part of, will be the, the growth. And I, I have there enough as well. So will be interesting how the three or 400 logistician managers and so on will reflect to this. Yeah, degrowth is a, is a fascinating word. And as, as you suggest, it's, I think it's very closely allied with enough uh, degrowth. And it's, it's the opposite of what uh, business and, and really society. I, I, I walk with my wife along the, the ocean and we see these great big houses, the mansions. And, and sometimes if we're in a cynical mood, we will speculate as to how many families you could house in that great big mansion uh, and then there's just one right after another uh, and and it's um <clears throat> it, it it does not arouse my envy um the word that comes to mind is loathe i i, I loathe this show of bigness and this worship of bigger than you and and it's and it's so sad to me 
it, it is so sad that we can't take this and and help the homeless or feed those that don't have enough to eat. We certainly have enough of them in the world, right? We know we make enough food for everybody if we just wouldn't waste it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm really looking forward to the future. You know, they said some people are afraid of AI and afraid of all the things that are happening and scared about what what it could mean and and if it's going to create a dystopia. But in fact, I'm very optimistic about the future. Look at the opportunities that we have. Just recently, we started remote learning, uh, remote medicine, right? Telemedicine. So we don't have to drive all day to see a doctor or go to a, a village, you know, five hours away, just get medical attention uh, or to learn. Uh, the, the opportunities like that. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. When I walk out on the sidewalk and I watch cars go by and the driver is playing on his uh, smartphone, and I, I say a prayer that the autonomous vehicles will get here faster, right? I want driverless cars. I want driverless cars. We're so stupid, you know? <laughs> we really let ourselves do some stupid things. So I'm looking forward to the future. I, th I think this is going to be getting better every day. I was just thinking about um, the meaning of the words enough. And I think there is one of my favorite American expressions is a great way of describing enough. And that is knock it off. I don't know where it comes from, but it's such a wonderful way of saying that's enough. Knock it off. I think it's wonderful. It really it puts everything into perspective. <laughs> That, that was one of my dad's favorite phrases, I have to tell you. Okay, boys, knock it off. It's wonderful. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, what I like was the image of the scale, which you show up, that enough is here in the middle. And we are right now on the balance scale. So we can go by <laughs> artificial intelligence uh, ruling our life. Or we can go the way how it will be balanced with our own thinking and with the way that we will use the tool. It's a great tool, why not? But will not uh, be used by the tool. And currently it looks like, at least in media, it looks like more than we are being pushed into being used by this technology. Uh, but we have the right to decide. And that's I think this is why I really love that the people can listen to this course and read all the stuff because it is right now very important. We are at, at re really at this moment of a very difficult disbalance or we will keep the balance or we will uh, establish the balance because it's not there yet, but we can still set it up on the right level, I think. And enough should help. And if you think of enough as a metric, then I think what we need to understand is that enough is the upper limit of the metric, not the lowest limit. So when you've reached enough, that's, point. that's it. Point. I just saw uh, some metrics of uh, carbon emissions uh, in 2023, someone, Switzerland, someone published. And I was just wondering whether it's finally going down. In a short term, in a few months, it looks like so. But if you look from a longer perspective, then it goes since 1992, when generally we started with the trading, or in 1997, to be honest, uh, it goes only up. There was only one gap, and it was COVID. And it was for, I think, one year or half a year or something like that. That It really goes down because it was a sudden change. But shortly after it goes up again. 
But the scale is interesting. I think it's quite interesting. I will try to visualize. So interesting what you said. Uh, is there anything which you will never have enough of? Love? Acceptance? Peace? Peace? <clears throat> oh, we have too much peace. Stop it. <laughs> we have enough. Yeah, we can't make a profit out of peace. No. <laughs> I it's think interesting. It's interesting. Somehow I'm considering to include it in the declaration of human rights. I don't know how, but somehow it fits in the image. Mm -hmm. it does. Maybe in the introduction yeah. or something fits in, in there. I have it still open in my in my computer, the page, and I'm working time to time on it. But somehow it fits there. I think so too. I mean, we're, we should all be entitled to have enough to eat. We should all be entitled to a roof over our heads. We shouldn't all be entitled <clears throat> to warm a mansion that we're only in two days a week. Hmm. Will be interesting. And if I ask the opposite way, is there anything which how to ask? That's interesting. We can ask what will be for you enough. But how I will ask the, the opposite? Actually, one way, <laughs> Michael, to look, to look at enough, <clears throat> enough is like a pair of shoes. When they fit, that's enough. If it's not enough, they're too small. If it's too much, they're too big. <clears throat> and a pair of shoes which are too big is no use to us. A pair of shoes which is too small. So we only need enough. And your foot is different from everybody else's foot. Yeah, yeah. Quite interesting brand for a shoemaker, generally. <laughs> enough shoes. <laughs> uh, so... In such a short time, we discovered so many interesting aspects of NL that I'm wondering why it disappeared, why it was pushed away. You can see with the, um, the nuclear arms race that um, we never could get enough weapons. So we had enough nuclear weapons to destroy the planet so many times over. <laughs> and then there is no... There's no knock it off with that. I mean, we've got enough. Let's build another one. Then that's the point. Time said, why? Just knock it off. You know, we, we can't destroy the place twice. <clears throat> but there was something in humans. We just had to keep this build, this build, this build. Let's make another one, another one, another one. So with weapons, there is no upper limit to enough. It, it's, um, it's an infinity. So the disappearance of the world was driven by the economical interest. Mm, maybe a little bit more. Uh, is it is it human nature to want to be uh, faster or bigger or stronger than the next guy? In fact, I think it's in nature. Um, for one animal in a herd, the the alpha male in the herd uh, gets all the, the females. And that's how they keep the bloodline the strongest. And one day a, a young strong kid will come up and beat the the that alpha male that was the leader. Um, so it, it kind of feels like it's in nature to try to be better or bigger or more on the other hand i think there is a limit so if you become the uh, the alpha male you cannot be twice that's only us that's only the human we are once alpha male so i will try to be twice okay good 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 point i think this so that's is, enough 
So when I he see. is the alpha male, he it is it is enough. Hmm. Hmm. So interesting. Uh, when you write and you are in the mood of a writing, do you feel anything which will say enough? Is there anything like you are tired or your eyes start to burn or some other symptom that will tell you it's enough for today? When when I'm writing, it it it, it it's it's like an avalanche. Uh, I am certainly not driving this bus. Uh, it's an avalanche. Uh, my fingers can't type fast enough. Um, and then when it's enough, that avalanche just settles down. And I say, okay, that's 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 pretty good for tonight. What about but I'm not in control. Me? I'm not in control of that. I, I can notice that when the um, when the magic is gone from the sentences and they're no they're no longer fun. There's no there's no rhythm. There's no game in it. It's just words. Then it's time to stop. I, good way of putting it. Yes. So there is a, and I think that everyone has a has this somehow this enough line which he or she recognize or can recognize. The question is if they listen to that, you know, in the work. Yeah, no, uh, for years and years, I did not listen to that. I, I, yeah, I, I, I know the magic is gone, as Kevin says, um, but I still stay on for another hour or another two hours. Uh, yeah, don't recognize it or recognize it, but don't act on it. Guys, I have a lovely word. And I was just thinking, if this word could be considered the opposite of enough, and that is insatiable. Then you is have that to... the opposite of enough? To be honest, I don't know what is the translation. So I have to check uh, because I never used this term and probably never heard it before. It comes from the word satiate, which means to the hunger's gone. I am I am sated, or yeah. I have satiated. I am satiated, satisfied, but to be insatiable, satisfied. Yeah, insatiable. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. What Don't about? What about it, it, if we say we, we don't have in and I never have enough love? Do, is it possible for the world or a person to have enough hate? How much is that? How much is that? I think this is one of the terms which seems to be like an edge of a, of a knife, really very sharp one, because it can result great things, but at the same time, I think it can wake up when it's in the wrong hands. You know, more is nothing less than it's not enough. If you say... You do not have to say you have to work more. You just say you didn't work enough. That's being critical. So I think it was quite easy to 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 put this term in this negatives, you know, in the head of student. You did not have you did not work enough because you would get uh, not the best grade and whatever. Uh, you did not help at oh. home uh, enough. So it has really a very strong negative thing, but at the same time, we did not have enough love. You cannot have any time enough love. It's so interesting. So 
I feel that it is a very important term. I feel that we have to get it back, but I feel the danger as well, how it can be easily misused because of the old, let's say, explanation which someone introduced to really push it through and to make this negative, uh, negative feeling about it. And would like to talk about it with someone who really dive even deeper in the world, in the words, uh, to see whether we will be able. So maybe next time we will have another speaker as well. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see. So I'm trying to invite some ladies, of course, to our group of three old men. Uh, <laughs> But I'm all the time sending the sending the recordings, you know, and they did not reply. So I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. <laughs> Don't send pictures. <laughs> no, I send videos, of course. Uh, but I was thinking one thing with enough is that enough is it's a question these days. Have you got enough? And you can say, it's okay, we can make do. Or you can say, I could do with more. Whereas in the old days, enough was what nature provided you with. And then you had no choice but to make do. <clears throat> that, that's an interesting point. The historical perspective of the concept of enough. Uh, and, and I think back to, to um, the Great Depression in the 30s where many, many people lost their farms, lost their homes, um, and had to make do. And nothing was wasted. Uh, we, we saved newspapers, we saved, uh, we just, we used everything. And if we didn't have enough food, then perhaps we would take a walk in the woods and find some mushrooms and some berries and some, and you made do. And if you used to have three meals a day, uh, and now during this difficult period, we have one meal a day, somehow we live. Uh, so the concept uh, of, of enough has changed over time, I think. Now having enough means having a big house or a big car or a, something, I think. And, and also it's it's not just one it, 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 you know, it, it, you, you look through the different strata, strata or layers of the, of the society and, and enough means different things to different people. You know, I just seen a today interesting a video from China where they uh, make food in generally in, uh, in stone crash into the pulver. So they make a pulver out of some special stone, maybe related to calcium. Not sure it was uh, reddish, so I'm not sure what it was, and that was not explained. And they use it instead of an oil or water. They put it in a in the in the uh, in a pot. They heat it, and of course, if sand get heated by fire, it's very very hot. And they make food in it. They just fry it in in a in a in generally in a in a pulver, in a sand. It was a very interesting way. And they mm. said that it was introduced some few hundred years ago when there was a time of scarcity and they did not have anything else. They cannot afford any oil or anything similar. So they start to use this. And I have seen similar in some African countries. Uh, some, um, I think some type of coffee is produced very similar way where you have this uh, cap going through hot sand and somehow it, I think Turkish coffee or something like that, I do not remember. But some nations use it. So, and you know, okay, they did not have enough oil, but they have enough sand. So they start to use the sand. So I think that's really, really interesting. And it will be very interesting to see the perspective, the historical perspective, uh, because you call it the strategy of enough. And I love the term, strategy of enough. If I can borrow this for the next article, I would love to, if I remember that, because it's a very interesting term. 
strat because it's connected to the growth and it's connected in my head to the declaration of human rights and the responsibilities it's uh, somehow in one picture i think I one mean, thing which would be really interesting is to have a um, an end of life tax on everything which is more than enough so when i die if i got three houses then I should be taxed on two of those houses. If I have three kitchens in one house, I should pay a tax on everything which is more than enough. Should be taken and given back to society. I would love it if you would expand on expand on that. That is that's a uh, really a mind blowing concept. I'd I'd love to talk for an hour on that. An because end of it, life tax. Because it will not be the the aim will be not permanent col collecting more, because they will know that at the end they will pay for what they have collected above the level. We have two more minutes to go, so it's. Uh, but I think that's not the last time we speak about enough. Uh, maybe we will speak from a different perspective or some of the terms which has been introduced. But somehow I feel we are again a step closer to the wasteless world. The question but I is, think the interesting thing is, as soon as you said that word, I knew this was going to be a really interesting conversation. <laughs> and it is so different from many other words, which the first thought is, wow, how can we speak 40 minutes? But this one was very, from the very first moment, it was like, like, I don't know how to express it, but you are right. So, okay. So it was a great time. We have one and a half minute. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone. Peace. Think what is enough for you. And let us know. Let us know. Use the comments uh, in the YouTube uh, in LinkedIn, anywhere where we post it. And let's share. Ask your parents, ask your children, ask anyone. It will be very interesting to collect the information and to work with it because we have only one life and there should be enough for everyone to live their life meaningful. And it is the planet offer it. So let's use it. So thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Kevin. Have a nice time. Free of waste and wasting in all its forms. Stay safe, free, and have enough. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. <laughs>